Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation. And in today's video, we're doing an amp and sub install in this Hyundai venue. Now in this install, we're gonna show you how to integrate an aftermarket amplifier and subwoofer to the factory audio sound system. Let's get started. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're gonna go with for our install here today. First and foremost is the subwoofer. It's this kicker uh, comp 10 inch loaded enclosure box. Uh, it does about 300 watts RMS. And to accompany and power this subwoofer, we do need an amplifier. This little power acoustic secondhand amplifier is what uh, the customer wants installed. To connect our amplifier to the factory system, we do need a wiring kit here. Now we are gonna go with an eight gauge amplifier wiring kit. Uh, this is an example of one with power ground. It comes with RCA's, fuse holder, speaker wire, remote turn on wire, and all the accessories to get it mounted. We're gonna use an eight gauge with our amplifier here today. And finally, to connect this amplifier to the factory system, because our factory radio doesn't supply an RCA low level pre-out for an amp, we do need some sort of line out converter. Now your amplifier may already have what we call speaker level or high level inputs, where you can essentially just attach the high level input right to a speaker um, line in the vehicle. This one does have that, but the harness is missing, so we can't go that route. So instead we have this budget friendly Pack Audio SNI 35. Um, there's various different versions of line out converters there on the market. Because this doesn't have any sort of factory amplifier, this budget friendly one work, will work just fine. We need a uh, remote turn on wire in the vehicle and if your line out converter doesn't provide one, you, we are gonna use an add a circuit. Essentially here we can tap into a factory circuit that allows us to snag accessory power from the fuse box to signal our amplifier to turn on when the vehicle is running. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pull apart our amplifier wiring kit. First step, let's head to the battery area up underneath the hood and start running our power wire from the battery area through the firewall to our desired amplifier location. Here underneath the hood, our battery is on the driver's side. Popping the terminal cover open, uh, we see both the tightening stud and basically your accessory stud here. We wanna go to this stud. We don't wanna compromise the uh, tightening integrity around the actual terminal post. So this is a perfect location to connect our power wire for our subwoofer. Now, of course, we'll wanna run that power wire through an inline fuse, which we'll mount in some location here in this area. Um, then we need to find a grommet through the firewall that's going to allow us to uh, run that wire into the cabin of the vehicle. Here inside the vehicle, we have found that underneath this seat, based on the size of our amplifier, this could be a great location for us to get it mounted and secured. So what we're gonna do is pull the four 14 millimeter bolts from the seat bracket, allows us just to tip the seat back, to give the space that we need for us to build a an out mount out of ABS, get everything mounted up underneath the seat nice and safely. We found some firewall access and we got our infamous little hanger here and poked it through the grommet that we found that runs through the firewall. That goes all the way through to the inside and we can see where that does pass on through. What we're gonna do is go up underneath the steering column to see how we found that access and how we're running this on through. All right, so up underneath the steering column, we have the main rubber grommet that passes through the majority of the wiring through the firewall into the engine bay. Now it is nice and large. And on the sides of it, it's a nice thin rubber where you can pierce through easily with a metal hanger in our case. And what we're gonna do is feed our wire through. Now we're not going through that main harness loop whatsoever. We don't wanna damage the factory wiring in any way. And so we wanna stay as far away from that main loom as possible. On the outside of that loom is that nice thin rubber where it makes it nice and easy for us to pull our wire through. Now what we've done here is on this other end of the hanger, we've taped our wire to it, and we're gonna lube it up really well with some soap and water, and we're gonna pass that wire on through into the engine bay, pulling it top side from the engine compartment.
Now, with our wire pulled through the firewall here, we just pulled enough to uh, allow us to hook up our fuse holder. We're gonna go ahead and build a fuse mount, get our fuse holder done, and run this wire to the positive post on the battery. Now, we don't wanna hook it up until our amplifier is fully connected, so before we do any electrical connections, always a good idea to pull the negative off the battery. Right, so here at the bench, we prepped our fuse holder. Now, we made a little C-bend with a hole in it, and this is gonna to go to a bolt um, that also ties down the battery. Got our ring terminal on, everything is heat shrinked. We put a wire ferrule in there. It's nice and insulated so we can minimize any potential of corrosion. This will go to the positive post on that terminal. This other end will connect to the wire that's in the vehicle that we ran through the firewall. So with this done, let's head over to the vehicle and start getting this installed. We also loom the other end. As you can see here, this is all done. We also put up wire ferrule with some heat shrink on the end. It's ready to go with the little gasket that goes in there. Um, so we're gonna connect our power wire fuse holder and everything to that line and start getting it all mounted. Okay, so we got our fuse holder mounted there. We got our 10 millimeter all in. And uh, we'll of course put this, this positive post as soon as we are done and ready to go. We modify this cover just a little bit so it can pass wire through and this will still be able to shut. So everything's loomed, ready to go. This will just hang out until we get our amplifier all wired up. So at this point of time, let's head inside, start pulling panels and running that power wire to under the driver's side front seat. All right, so we're back at the bench. We're just wiring up our amplifier here. We actually created a little ABS plastic mount that we screwed it to, and this is gonna give us an opportunity to zip tie all our wires to it, and it'll fit nice and snug in the location up underneath the seat. Uh, we also actually left the screws uh, just sticking out a hair as it will just bite into the carpet there, and this thing's not gonna go anywhere. We just don't want it sliding around um, on top of the carpet, this is gonna give us the, the grip that we need and also a place to zip tie our wiring too. We got our ground ready to go, nice little short of ground and we're gonna show you where we're gonna ground our amplifier here. Also using ferrules here at these connections as well. Got a remote turn on wire which will run to the fuse box um, and we'll connect our add a circuit to that here in a moment. And finally, we have some speaker wire, some OFC speaker wire that we're gonna run to the trunk area. We do need to connect our power wire to the last terminal here on the side of the amplifier. Um, that is the wire that we pulled through the firewall. Uh, once we get this installed, we'll get that also installed in the amp terminal, uh, also using a ferrule. On this side of the amplifier, we do have our RCAs ready to go and our base knob wire, same thing. We got it all zip tied there to it um, and we'll run this through the carpet. So this will make for a nice clean install and we can still get our gains here on the right hand side. Finally, our line out converter, which we haven't talked about yet, we'll install this in the B pillar right by the driver's side. Since we're running a mono amplifier, we could also snag um, audio from the uh, passenger side B pillar, um, but we're just gonna snag from one speaker, B, being that it's a mono. Without further ado, with this all done here at the bench, let's get this fitted in the car, get our power wire done, and start installing our line out converter. Okay, so we went ahead and finished our ground here. Nice clean spot. We tapped and put a 10 millimeter bolt there. Now, alternatively, there is a bolt right there. You can kind of see that there, holding our um, gas door release. You can use that, but clean up your paint. Don't just put your ground there. Uh, we wanted a nice clean ground, and based on our length of ground wire, we just went ahead and put it right there, cleaned it up with a wire brush, as you saw, and got that all tapped in there. So power and ground of the amplifier is now done. 
We've got everything nice and clean here. We've got our RCAs kind of ran out to this point because we're going to the B pillar to tap in for signal. And then we need to come up here to the fuse box to find a circuit that's only on when the key is on, and that's gonna be a remote turn on wire. We're using that add a circuit to snag that 12 volt signal so we can trigger the amp to turn on when the key is on. All right, so power and ground are done. So we need to talk about getting signal to our amplifier from the factory system. We grabbed our SNI 35 by pack. Now, since we're only snagging basically one channel, it's a mono block, so we don't really need two channels of input, but you can. We're doing one, so we combine both uh, negative wires, which is two of the wires with the black stripe, and then two of the positive wires, and we soldered into a single speaker wire, just a nice short little run, and essentially here, this is going to tap into that uh, B-pillar speaker signal wire, so we'll show you we're going to tap into that. We don't want to break that original connection. We'll just strip the shielding back, solder onto that, and then this and these outputs go to the RCAs, which go to the amplifier. Simple as that. So let's take this. We're going to go ahead and um, insulate our soldered connections here with some electrical tape. We'll uh, loom a little bit of the harness with some tested tape just to protect these wires and uh, connect this in the vehicle. Okay, so we got our line-out converter. It's just Kind of there we're going to zip tie it here inside the b pillar we took our cover off now there are two clips here at the top and a clip here clip here clip here clip there and with your um, kick panels off it comes right on out super easy once that's exposed this harness that goes up into the door we carefully open that up and there is one set of speaker wires in there that's twisted it's a twisted pair and it's a yellow and a brown Yellow is going to be our positive wire, brown is going to be our negative. And what we've done here is we soldered our wire onto that. Now we didn't break the original connection. We just stripped the shielding back with some strippers and uh, fed our wire through and basically like threading the needle. And we soldered onto that, making sure it's a nice and solid connection. And we're going to re-loom this harness with some electrical tape and Tessa tape and put it back as it was from factory. So those are the two speaker wires that we tapped into. We verified their positive and negative polarity by running a test tone. That is our connection. That's going to be our signal for our amplifier. And again, we're going to mount our line-out converter probably down a little bit lower um, there uh, towards the bottom of the B pillar. So that is our connection. Uh, for our signal goes through the line-out converter to the RCA's which go to our amplifier input So that is it. We're gonna go ahead and relume this harness and clean everything up and reinstall the B pillar Now just as a side note if you didn't want to tap your own ground or use that other bolt There is actually a factory ground here in the B pillar. All right Lastly here are the remote turn on wire that little blue wire we ran up from the remote turn on in our amplifier goes up here and to our fuse box, the very top left fuse there is our power socket fuse, and it's only on when the key is on. So we added our add a circuit, and you put it in the add a circuit in the first position. And then we add the secondary fuse that runs on our remote line, and then we put this add a circuit in its place. It's just crimped on as it comes with a crimped connection. We crimped it on. And that's what connects into that little blue remote turn on wire. This will essentially just plug in to that location, just like so. And that's going to provide the remote trigger wire needed for the amplifier to know when to turn on when the key is in the Okay, so with the ground and the power all fully connected to the amplifier with our speaker wire all connected and a remote turn on wire connected, we're safe now to go ahead and add our power wire to that positive post of the battery terminal. Now remember, it's always a good idea to remove the negative as you make that connection, tighten up the 12 millimeter nut. Once that's all good and back on and reassemble over here, then you can reinstall the negative on the battery. It just avoids any shorts in the vehicle. We also put a little notch here and a little notch here. So that closes right on up. Everything down here looks nice and clean and factory. We, nothing that really stands out here in the engine bay. At this point of time, we're good to go to shut the Okay, head. so we got our amplifier all mounted. All the cables run. Electricity fixed really well up underneath the vent there. So the vent won't be directly blown. It'll blow right over the top. A little uh, ABS plastic mount works great. Everything's zip tied nice and clean. 
We just set our gains with an SMD DD1. So the gains are perfectly set for the factory radio based on this amplifier. And everything else is tucked nicely up underneath the seat. Seat's rolled all the way forward. So it's in, when it's in its normal position, you won't be able to actually know that it's there. Finally, from the amplifier, we just tucked our speaker wire up underneath panels and we have it pop out right back behind the seat here. Left plenty of length in case they wanna adjust it here in the back, left or right. And terminals are right here. Got everything hooked up, positive and negative. So that's it for this install. We got the seat all back in, we got everything wiped all down, bolts back in, and amplifiers all tuned to the factory radio. If you have any questions on what we did here, post a comment below. And if you like any of the parts that we used today, we'll link those all in the description of the video. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time, and we will see you in the next video.